Piccolo has recently collaborated with National Grid ESO and flex providers across the energy sector as part of the Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy Flex competition to develop a marketplace of secondary trading. Competitive secondary markets are an important feature of flexibility markets, providing security to those participating that if they need or wanted to, could trade away their contracted obligations. To support this, Piccolo has developed a marketplace, providing a centralised place to buy, find and sell contracts, and we are excited to announce the first secondary market open to users on Piccolo Exchange is the UK's capacity market. The capacity market is used to ensure there is a sufficient supply to meet periods of high demand on the electricity system. Each year, National Grid ESO, on behalf of the UK government, holds auctions to procure capacity to meet a set target requirement. Two types of auctions are held. The first is a four-year-ahead auction titled T4, where the bulk of the capacity is acquired to meet the set target. The second type of auction, which follows T4, is a one-year-ahead T1 auction. This acts as a top-up to account for any changes to the capacity procured in the T4 or in the set capacity required. Successful providers are then obligated to be generating or reducing demand when called upon by National Grid ESO during a stress event and face penalty repayments for failure to fulfil their obligations. Secondary trading happens in the capacity market in cases where the holders of contracts are unable to deliver their obligation. This can happen if a unit is down for maintenance, or, in the case of new build assets, there are construction delays, meaning it will not be operational when required. In these cases, to avoid a penalty, providers can trade away their contracts in the secondary market. This occurs before a stress event takes place, where contract holders exchange their obligation for either part or for the full delivery year with an eligible transferee. I met with Kelsey, our Innovation Project Manager at Piccolo, and Gerpel, LCP's Energy Consultant, earlier today to discuss Piccolo Exchange and the importance of secondary trading. Hi, my name is Aldous. I'm the Communications Associate here at Piccolo, and I'm joined with Kelsey, our Innovation Project Manager, and Gerpel, our Energy Consultant at Lane, Clark & Peacock, known as LCP. And today we'll be exploring Piccolo Exchange and secondary trading within the capacity market. Thank you too for joining here today. Um, I know that we were supposed to do this as a conference, um, but everything going on right now, we just thought it'd be better to get you two together and, and talk about secondary trading and Piccolo Exchange. Kelsey, how did the Flex Exchange project with National Grid ESO go and why did the project end up taking this direction? I think the project uh, went really well overall. Um, it was a great opportunity for us to start expanding on our Piccolo Flex marketplace and, and start to branch out outside of uh, DSO Flex. So continued along our kind of company themes of continuing to increase transparency and, and promote visibility within flexibility marketplaces. Um, it was a great opportunity as well for us to start working on some of those bigger markets. So the capacity market, um, and specifically secondary trading was the focus of this project. So we spent a lot of time um, with both the National Grid EMR team as well as um, capacity market participants, both ones that were already registered on Piccolo Flex and participate in the DSO markets, as well as um, the opportunity to build some new relationships and, and get some new companies and, and users registered on the platform. So through those sessions with them, um, we, we started to understand that there was a really good opportunity um, for a marketplace like Piccolo to start um, increasing the visibility within secondary trading in the capacity market through a lot of that um, user research and testing we did. The, the kind of general feedback was within the secondary trading space, what was really missing um, and could be improved on was just kind of better visibility and a centralized place where those uh, capacity market participants knew they could list their agreements to trade, find participants to trade with, um, and just we could also help in starting to streamline that process and, and really make it easier for them to get um, from that point of, of having somewhere to trade to, to being able to execute that trade at the end. Um, and so the capacity market seemed like a, a great opportunity for us. The recent white paper released um, from Piccolo on Exchange highlights the user research process. Can you talk about how this coincides with Exchange promoting visibility and transparency in the market? Yeah, I think as I just touched on, um, I think probably every, every user and company we talked to as well as um, National Grid themselves said that 
within the secondary trading space, that, that lack of visibility was probably the biggest barrier that needed to be um, overcome in, in helping to improve the secondary trading process overall. And I think that's always been one of our core values at Piccolo and, and how this marketplace does start to help to improve these flexibility markets is just being able to increase that visibility and, and having people know that there is a, a kind of centralized place that they can go to, to make these trades and take that on. Um, I think the existing process that was there already in secondary trading really didn't kind of foster any sort of visibility or, or transparency and, and ease in finding other people to trade with. And Gopal, what does secondary trading currently look like in the capacity market before a marketplace like Pickle Exchange came along? Sure. So the secondary trading market is quite healthy for the 2020 delivery year. There have been over 250 trades made um, exchanging CM obligations worth £35 million. And for the 2021 delivery year, there have been over 300 trades made um, exchanging CM obligations worth Fifteen million pounds, um, so so it's fairly active at the moment. Generally, most of the activity takes place three to four months prior to the start of a delivery year. Although we have seen some activity um, mid delivery year, obviously as, as units um, encounter unexpected outages or, or maintenance. Um, typically, it's small distributed um, generators and capacity providers that are taking place and uh, that are participating in, in this marketplace. So generally under 10 megawatts and covering a range of asset classes from um, demand side response units and providers and gas CHP, gas recip and battery storage assets. Um, it's also a mixture of not just um, new build assets coming through, but it's um, existing assets that, that are encountering Know, unplanned maintenance or, or forced outages and wanting to divest their CM obligation to avoid um, any, any sort of penalty payments or, or reputational damage. You mentioned some of the kind of um, assets in the capacity market that are trading in the secondary market and we know there is currently a lot of interest from investors in new build battery storage. What have we seen in the capacity market recently in terms of new battery storage and what other opportunities exist in flex markets for these assets? Sure. So there's been significant interest in battery storage in the recent um, capacity market auction for the 2025-2026 period. Um, eight gigawatts of battery storage, both existing and, and new, um, attempted to pre-qualify with around five gigawatts um, pre-qualifying or conditionally pre-qualifying. -pre um, compare that to um, the previous T-4 and only one and a half to two gigawatts of, of, of battery storage um, units and providers um, actually pre-qualified. So there's been a significant increase in, in the amount of battery storage capacity participating in within the capacity market. Um, why is that? Well, capacity market revenues um, stack um, alongside wholesale balancing and ancillary service market um, revenues. Um, and revenue streams from, from all those, um, from the energy markets and from the ancillary markets, um, are quite high for batteries. Um, so the dynamic containment market, which is a frequency response market, the clearing price for that has been at the cap of £17 per megawatt per hour for a significant period of time during 2021 from the wholesale and balancing markets, intraday spreads have been recently been very, very high due to the high gas prices and tightness um, within the energy system. Um, and those spreads will continue to be fairly high um, going forward. On, on a fundamental basis, we expect that low and zero price periods, the, the amount of low and zero price periods to increase over time as the system decarbonizes, whilst the price during the peak of the day and will still be quite high as backup generation from natural gas fired engines or um, hydrogen and um, powered generation and um, sets a, a high price and therefore the, the those intraday price spreads the difference between the highest price and the lowest price will continue to be um, quite quite wide and um, so because of those 
high revenues um, and the ease of which um, you can build new battery storage assets. And they're very quick to build. And that, 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 that interest in battery storage is probably set to continue. And we need to be a little bit cautious because with the amount of battery storage coming through, they will self cannibalize some of those revenue streams. And so while, while there is a fundamental need for storage, um, the amount of storage that could potentially come through and is coming through quite quickly could, could mean some, some of those um, forecasts are a little bit overblown at the moment. And Kelsey, how might a marketplace make secondary trading easier to trade and how could this change the type of assets participating in primary and secondary markets? I think the marketplace and the platform are well placed, as we already said, to just increase that visibility, but as well start to be able to streamline the secondary trading process. Um, having users come in and know exactly what the steps are in order to execute a trade, um, but other things that we can implement as well, such as a standardized contract. Um, so when a trade occurs, everyone knows that they're agreeing to the same commercial terms um, and they're not going through different negotiations depending on every party that they're trading with. Um, we've also seen uh, within secondary trading in the capacity market that some of those larger contracts um, get traded away into multiple different pieces. I think we've seen contracts be traded away in up to, I think, like 10 to 15 different trades. Um, so being able to do that on a platform rather than agreeing to 10 to 15 different trades offline through emails, through phone calls that was previously done, um, the platform should, should start to make that a little bit easier and speed up the process as well. Um, where we're looking at secondary trading to take away the obligation where an asset's gone down for maintenance that's unplanned, especially in the middle of a delivery year. The existing secondary process um, through all those manual steps can take, take quite a long time, anywhere probably up to the range of a month. So if, if your asset's gone down unexpectedly, it's, it's really not ideal that it's gonna take that long to be able to, to find someone to take that obligation away. So starting to, to put this through the platform hopefully can um, improve the turnaround time of some of these trades as well and um, that will help secondary trading to, to be more useful in these scenarios where there's unplanned outages and things like that. Um, and then I guess maybe lastly in terms of assets participating, as, as we've said, it's, it's some of these smaller, more distribution connected assets um, where they're new builds, for example, you may be able to get them into the market sooner if, if they've qualified for a T minus four auction, for example, but start to come online earlier if they can take over contracts via secondary trading and, and get participating faster. Um, it's just another way for them to start um, earning revenue a little bit sooner as well. Um, with these distribution connected assets, they've obviously then got Piccolo Flex and, and those um, DSO Flex markets that they can start to look at as well. And so how there's that interplay between the different markets on Piccolo is, is something that could be interesting in the future. And so what's the strategy here for Piccolo? Because I know that you just mentioned Piccolo Flex already facilitates uh, DSO flexibility markets. Why has this new market for secondary trading been developed? Yeah, so I think it's, it's all part of our kind of bigger picture of looking at how Piccolo can transform into more of a multi-market platform, giving our users access to multiple rev revenue streams, being able to stack different services and just increasing the overall transparency and flexibility markets across both distribution and transmission system operators. Um, and yeah, really just promoting that, that whole system transparency and, and coordination. And so this was, I think, our first step outside of DSO Flex and bringing a new market onto the platform. Um, but hopefully, again, just the first step and, and it will continue to increase from here and, and more opportunities will be brought on. And as, as those new opportunities get brought on, um, Piccolo can find ways to help Flex providers start to be able to stack those contracts in different revenue streams and, and participate in multiple markets um, across just a single platform. Um, go for Piccolo's ambition is all about driving towards net zero. How might the capacity market be developing to support this transition? And is there a role for secondary markets and other markets? Sure. So the capacity market is technology agnostic. And um, any capacity provider can enter um, this market as long as they're not receiving support payments. So um, as long as they're not receiving a contract for difference, a feed-in tariff payment, or receiving um, renewable obligation certificates. 
Um, the capacity market itself is designed to ensure there's enough supply on the system to meet peak demand in current and future years. The way it does this is by um, providing payments to existing generation um, in the form of single year contracts um, and providing long term multi year payments to new build generation. This becomes problematic with the transition to net zero as it means potentially um, carbon intensive generation, um, so gas fired generation, can receive a multi-year contract for up, for up to 15 years and be locked on to the system. Um, there are changes being made to um, try and prioritise low and zero carbon generation to, to, to alleviate this problem. So um, they're considering carbon intensity limits for um, new build generation um, coming, trying to access these multi-year contracts and um, potentially um, splitting the auction and um, having two auctions, one for low and zero carbon generation. So that would be um, gas with carbon capture and storage um, or, or hydrogen fired generation. Um, so having a separate auction and, and two clearing prices. They're also looking at removing a barrier to entry for um, long duration storage. So for pump storage, which takes um, six or more years to build, a uh, four year ahead auction um, it is, is a barrier to, to them participating in, in the capacity market. So they're potentially looking at delaying the start of the delivery year to, to allow um, more long duration or, or pump storage de generation to, to come through. And Kelsey, the project kicked off by focusing on the capacity market, but what future opportunities are there for new markets and opportunities for Pickwell Exchange? I think directly within the capacity market, there's a good opportunity for this exchange to also facilitate volume reallocation. So similar to secondary trading, um, after the, the dispatch or delivery has taken place for those that have over delivered to be able to um, trade that over delivery with capacity providers who have under delivered. Um, I think more aligned to our existing product um, over the next year or so, DSOs are also going to have to allow secondary trading of their flexibility contracts. And I think Piclo, being the primary market for a lot of these DSOs, is really well placed um, to support secondary trading in, in that area as well. And just before we finish off, where else can people find out more information about secondary trading and capacity markets? For more information on Piccolo Exchange, uh, we've got a couple blogs on our website at piccolo.energy. Uh, we've also released a white paper in conjunction with LCP, um, just going into more detail around the secondary trading space, um, as well as how to use Piccolo Exchange. Um, so get in touch with us if you would like more information or to be registered for that. Yeah, and for general capacity market or energy market advice on new policy and regulation or investment, um, visit the LCP website and we'll, we'll be happy to help you out. Lovely, Kelsey Guffle, thank you so much for taking the time to be here and talk about secondary trading. For more information about the capacity market and Pickflow Exchange, you can visit us at pickflow.energy or follow us on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm.